It's Father's Day and many dads will have received one of these, if they're lucky, because there are still only half as many of these sold as there are Mother's Day cards. So on today's Songs of Praise, we raise a cheer for fathers everywhere. I meet the Jordan family to share their thoughts on food, faith and fatherhood. My dad is good because he gets my clothes ready. He likes to make jokes a lot. He fixes light bulbs when he doesn't even know what they're on. He's still alive. He's, <laughs> he's okay. We hear how one father is helping his young son reach new heights. I think he's the best daddy who has ever walked this earth. And 40 years after the death of Agatha Christie, Richard Taylor visits her home on the trail of a church mystery. For our music today, we have a great performance from gospel singer Lorraine Cato, and our hymns reflect the love, guidance and strength we receive from the greatest father of them all, God the Father. I grew up without one and now I am one and I consider it the most important job I've got. But being a dad isn't always easy, especially if like me, you don't have a role model. These days, more and more people are turning to the internet for advice. Like Eugene Jordan, he's gone a step further and set up his own video blog, following his traumatic experience of becoming a father. It was a bit of a a difficult experience for us because um, a few hours after my daughter was born um, we noticed that she was having a seizure and down one side of her body was just shaking and it was it was really traumatic to witness it because being a first-time parent we didn't know what was going on the seizures were caused because of two blood clots in her brain and you know we was prepared for for the worst we was told that this might have a negative impact on her be it a learning disability or, or perhaps even walking and being a family of faith, we spoke to our parents, we spoke to our friends, um, and our churches all prayed. And within a matter of days, the, the report came back from the doctor and, and she said, well, we don't know where they've gone, but the blood, the blood clots, they're no longer there. So for me, it was an incredible time where I witnessed my first ever miracle. I mean, we hear about miracles in the Bible, but I've never seen one myself. And that kind of uh, gave me a new, a new desire and a new born faith in God. I think if that never happened, I would have just been a parent who just kind of winged it. My, my daughter and I, we do loads of things together. We go to church as a family. She sits next to me whilst we're playing the drums and she has her own little pad. 
Although I come from a big family and I've got my dad and my four brothers, nobody close to me had been through the experience that I had been through. I kind of closed myself off a little bit because I didn't have anybody to talk to about it. But then I really wanted to make sure that fathers who have gone through the similar experience that, that I have, that they know that they're not alone. So I decided to share my story and I share my journey online. And I posted a, a YouTube video. What Father's Day message should I, should I say? Hi, I'm Eugene Jordan and we're here to talk about... Father's With technical Day. assistance from his wife Keisha and their daughter, Eugene has created the Men and Marriage site. Hi, I'm Eugene and this is... Geneva. And you're watching the Fatherhood series. What's been the response to the blog? Um, it's been bigger than I actually would have imagined. I never thought I would get guys sharing their story back with me. Usually guys talk about facts and statistics and here I am sharing my feelings. He's now enlisted the help of his dad and four brothers. You provide everything in the quantity and the quality and the love that you're supposed to. You cannot be helped but being seen as Superman. You cannot. Mm. I think it's good. Anytime I flick on the TV, I'm, I'm generally seeing some bozo not really paying attention to his child. I know those fathers that I've connected with who actually play a significant part in their children's life. We need to shine some light on those kind of guys because that's, that's really going to help other new dads or other fathers who have thought that actually this job is really difficult. So, what does a blogger about fathering do on Father's Day? I guess what any son should do, go and see their dad. At Eugene's parents' home, known as Jordan HQ, the whole family regularly descend for Sunday dinner, all 24 of them. This is my family, um, this is my mum. Hi, mum. Hello. Hi, David. Hiya. Where's your dad? Well, he's in the kitchen. I need to meet him. Mr. Jordan, How father of the family. <laughs> Good to see a man in the kitchen. I love cooking myself. Listen, can I help you while we have our next hymn? Give that a stir. Great. It's good, good father. For many dads, a kick about in the garden with the kids is what the weekend's all about. That's certainly the case for one father and son, even if the ball does need a little adapting. Football with Jackson is, is a little trickier than football with anybody else. The special ball that I've got has bells inside it, so when I jingle it, it goes... 
Jackson was diagnosed with LCA, which is Leber's congenital amaurosis, at three months old. From what we've been told, it's like the equivalent of looking through five neck curtains. So that's only about a metre of vision. I think he's the best daddy who has ever walked this earth. As a father, well, to begin with, I was completely devastated. Sadly, most people will turn to faith when tragedy strikes. And for us at that time, it was tragic. You know, it was a, we'd just introduced this beautiful baby boy into the world. And then to find out that actually, you know, there was something that wasn't quite right. And our faith is, is what got us through the early stages. I think if there's something that I deeply, most deeply desire, it's to just be the same as everybody else. They have said that within his lifetime, there should be a cure. Kevin's got a mountain to climb to raise money to make this possible. So the next task is climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. Um, it's a little bit nerve-wracking. Uh, there's a lot of training to be done beforehand. So over the next few months, I will be training on Snowdon to make sure that I'm trained as much as I can be. Climbing Snowdon, Britain's second highest mountain, will be a challenge in itself. So in preparation, Kevin and Jackson are leaving mum behind and going for a boy's day out, taking the train part of the way up. You know, it will be an amazing experience for him and I can't wait to get him up to the top of that mountain. I'm really, really excited because it's my first time ever on a mountain. So this is the train. How cool is it? Big step up. Well done. Good work. It's an hour-long journey to the top. So, Jax, I can now see all the way up the track for about two or three hundred yards. Yeah. And it's all going uphill really, really steep. Wow. You're going to start hearing the engine start roaring again in a minute, and you'll feel yourself tipping back into your seat. Are you ready for it? Yeah. Again, Jax, there's a really big drop to our left-hand side. Wow. Come on, train, you can do it. The train's taken them as far as it can. It's down to Jackson now to get to the summit at 3,560 feet. Can you feel that wind? Yeah, I can. Because it's so high up. This way. Hey, that was a huge rock. Right, a really uneven surface now. There we go. And there we're we the are. How's it feel? We're on the summit. Well done, mate. We're on the oh, peak. Good yeah. work. Well done. Snowden cheer. Well done, buddy boy. <laughs> summit cheer. Well done. We're at summit. the top. Yay. Yay. We're at the summit. You're the highest boy in Wales right now. Am I? Yeah. Wow. It's official. 